or for that matter any financial instrument if at all i have to uh, talk about uh, the true value the inherent uh, value of any of the financial uh, instruments in particularly uh, derivatives also we look at interest rates as one of the significant stuff so we really need to understand the different kinds of definitions that are associated with the interest rates different kinds of measurements that are associated and how i typically analyze the interest rates so all these things the, and the different uh, dimensions with respect to the interest rates how i use them as a part of uh, the valuations uh, process all these things is what we are going to look at as a part of this session so let's get uh, started off now the first thing we need to understand in this context is the different types of interest rates which are generally used for the valuation purposes the different types of interest rates broadly i see uh, to start with we work with three different kinds of interest rates one is the treasury rate then we talk about uh, libor and then we talk about repo rate though there are so many others initially i would like to touch base upon these three kind of rates but before i even get started into that aspect when i simply ask you what is an interest rate we simply talk about two major roles a borrower and a lender that particular rate which a borrower will pay additional on the borrowed amount from the lender that particular rate which the borrower promises to pay to the lender that is what we call as the interest rate let's say the lender has uh, given as lent 1000 bucks to the borrower at the end of one year the borrower pays 105 means the additional 5 that the borrower has paid to the lender is what we are calling as the interest and this 5 is paid over a 100 that has been borrowed so i convert it into percentage it works out as the interest rate for that particular period now what we typically uh, see is the interest rate number is different in different contexts probably when i am talking about uh, depositing my money in a bank the interest rate would be different if i am taking a housing loan the interest rate could be different if i am taking a personal loan the interest rate could be different because all these interest the definition is still the same there is a borrowing and a lending in the process and uh, that particular additional amount which the borrower is uh, agreeing to pay to the lender for taking the capital for taking the loan from the lender but the interest rates are different in each of these uh, cases because of difference in the credit risk that is involved when i say the credit risk here we are talking about uh, uh, the possibility that the borrower may default may not pay the interest and principal on time so if the possibility of default is higher then the credit risk is higher possibility of default is going to be higher then we say credit risk is higher then in that case the interest rate will be much higher because the lender is taking a higher risk by lending the money because there is a good chance that he will not get his money back so what he typically is doing is he is trying to uh, uh, he is trying to uh, increase his expected return the higher the risk the higher should be the expected return so he is trying to increase the expected return and which is why he is entering into uh, uh, entering into a higher interest rate 
So the higher the credit risk, the higher would be the interest rate uh, promised by the borrower to the lender. And that is how the interest rate uh, numbers differ from transaction to transaction. A pure analysis of credit risk, the possibilities of defaults will give rise to what kind of interest rate should be applicable. Now, the first kind of the interest rates which we need to be comfortable with is the treasury rate. Generally, it is the borrowing done by the government. So, government borrows on a short term for 3 months, 6 months, 1 year by issuing what is called as treasury bills or sometimes it could borrow in the long term for longer periods by issuing what are called as treasury bonds. Now, these, this is the way the government borrows from the general public and investors. So, investors lend money to the government. Investors lend money to the government either in a short term or in the long term and in the domestic currency itself. So, this does not uh, take foreign currency itself. And we are all uh, aware of this. The government it's very rare that it will default, right? Any borrowing done by the government generally is considered as highly secure, very rare that the government is going to default in any case and that too in its own currency. So that's the reason we use an alternative word for the government rates called as risk-free rate. We see at a lot of places we would be using this uh, concept of risk-free rate, sometimes denoted as RF. For all the valuation purposes, we will be uh, using this concept of risk-free rate, which is nothing but the rate that is associated with uh, the government's uh, borrowings, uh, with the investment. From an investor perspective, they are called as investment in government secu securities like treasury bills or treasury bonds and from a government perspective uh, it has raised the loan in the short term or the long term by issuing these kind of securities. So uh, especially for uh, the valuation purposes at a later point we will see that there is a possibility that uh, we use a risk free rate for evaluating many securities but what we are seeing in the practical world is Various traders, uh, they believe using a LIBOR more compared to the risk-free rate for the valuation. They, what they typically say is, this risk-free rate, typically, which is the treasury, the treasury rates, they tend to be very much low in a practical scenario because of various tax and regulatory issues. So, they are not a real reflection of the market. So, they don't uh, really uh, reflect the market rate. They are artificially low because of various tax and regulatory reason. And that is where they try to use LIBOR as something that is uh, for uh, evaluating the uh, derivative securities. Typically, stands for London Interbank Offered Rate. Now, the word, the sentence itself is uh, clear, the acronym is clear, London Interbank Offered Rate. So, this is the rate at which one bank, one bank is prepared to deposit its money, generally large sum of money, with other banks. So, this is the rate so, what is the kind of interest rate which a bank is expecting if it really wants to deposit its money with the other banks? So, it's a, it's a kind of a borrowing rate. So, the, from the other bank's perspective, it is trying to borrow from this bank. So, this is also a kind of a borrowing rate, but not by the government here. The borrowing is generally done by the banks here. And the bank which is depositing is actually the lender bank. 
So the lender bank will actually quote what is the kind of interest rates it uh, is expecting if it wants to deposit for 6 months, uh, 3 months, 12 months, any different kinds of periods up to 1 year, even 1 month, different periods up to 1 year kind of stuff. So these are called as LIBOR codes. So the and uh, typically it is seen that uh, compared to a treasury, the banks, the default rate is slightly higher because uh, it's not government. It's a bank which is a commercial uh, setup. The default rates are slightly higher. Generally, we see that they are having a credit rating of AA. Whereas when we uh, look at uh, the treasury, you can look at it almost as a AAA kind of a credit rating, which means the default levels are almost zero. But yeah, even in this case, the credit risk is much, much lesser, slightly more than the treasury rate. So what we see is the LIBOR rates are slightly higher than the treasury uh, rate. But uh, from a true uh, realistic perspective, they are much more realistic kind of rates compared to the treasury rate. So that's the reason for valuation of various uh, derivative securities. We see that LIBOR is being used compared to a treasury rate and all these uh, LIBOR is typically uh, traded in, in the euro currency market and this is one more uh, reason why people tend to use it. It is traded in the euro currency market and no government has any kind of a hold on it. It's not regulated by any government, whereas uh, here it's a government's kind of a borrowing mechanism. So even from that dimension, we see that LIBOR has a lot of uh, uh, importance compared to a treasury rate in terms of valuation. And what we see is if, uh, uh, if more borrowing of the US, uh, let's say borrowing of a currency is happening, so everything, the, the rates are market determined. If the borrowings of a particular currency are more and the lendings are lesser comparatively, borrowings of a particular currency, borrowing of a US dollar is more than the lending of the US dollars, then what we see is the LIBOR will increase. Right? Borrowing of a currency is more compared to the lending, then we see that. Uh, the, the LIBOR for that particular currency is going to increase, otherwise it's going to decrease. So that is one more important uh, interest rate that we typically uh, look at, the LIBOR. And in some cases, the other dimension of the interest rate is also called as a repo rate. In, in detail, it is called as a repurchase agreement rate. See, generally what we see is A party which is owning some kind of investment securities it is lending it is selling these securities to a third party getting cash and uh, after some time it is uh, getting the securities uh, back and paying cash paying cash and getting a securities back now what we see in this transaction is the cash which it has received here is lesser than the cash which it has to pay to get back the same securities and that additional payment that it is making for its own securities is what is the interest rate that is involved in this process and that interest rate is called as the repo rate. So it's as good as this particular party A has provided a loan to this, uh, uh, to this company for a short period